Hello and welcome to the Pro Tipster Football Show. Man, do we have some interesting topics for you today. Uh, have the wheels already come off the Spurs bandwagon? Do Arsenal actually have a backbone? And will Tony Pulis return faster than a dodgy curry? We've got Premier League picks and predictions galore. With me here today is Pro Tipster Dan. How's it going, man? Uh, not too bad. Um, didn't do too badly at the weekend. Mm-hmm. Didn't win everything, but... Uh... I'm can't happy. win them all, Dan. No, nah, you can't win them all. But I, I'm chuffed that Arsenal didn't win by two. They <laughs> uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's all right. And, and my 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 team didn't lose, so it's all great. Yeah, do your your team uh, lost me money though because they uh, I had I've been on the Sheffield United bandwagon and they've they've burned me twice now. So I think I've I think I've been on about five times now in handicaps twice. The last two they let me down. So maybe it's a bit like the Spurs thing I had in the intro. Have the wheels come off? I don't think the wheels came off. Um, Sheffield United battered Birmingham City mm. in the second half. They were like all, all guns blazing. And I was, at half time, I couldn't believe we were in the lead. We were in the lead because of a moment of magic from a, a Chelsea Loney, uh, Jeremy Boga that's not been played. And like we finally get to game and there you go. That's, that's why we should be picking it. Um, but maybe Birmingham City have turned a corner. It's worth it. It's one thing that's worth noticing about Birmingham City, especially as they play Wolves on Monday. Is that while they've been crap most of the season, the teams they've done best up against have all been in the top six. Mm. Well, so maybe it's kind of a false, uh, what, 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 what do they call it? it? I don't think it's a false position. I think it's more they raise their game for the big, uh, for the big teams. That's mm. what it's about. Sheffield United, Cardiff, um, the mob across the road who are fourth. You know, we've done well against them all. So Wolves, it's possible. I hope so. Uh, I mentioned their Tottenham as well. Uh, what do you think about them? Are they uh, are they still reeling from the Arsenal defeat? Because okay, they were covered against Dortmund, but Dortmund are terrible as we've seen for their collapse. They were four 0 up at half time, and Schalke came back and drew four all. And they were <laughs> they weren't very good against West Brom on on Saturday either. Do you think they're um? I, have they been found out a little bit, or what, what's going on here? Is, is it the classic Spurs, Spurs, and things yeah, up? <laughs> um, I don't know. I think it's too early to say. Um, I know that they, um, well, from talking to friends, the Spurs front line weren't on it, and the West Brom players had picked up because they weren't playing for Pulis anymore. They'd all uh, decided to uh, lift their collective heads uh, from their rear ends, uh, stop sulking, and actually play. And you know. If you give Salomon Rondon that, that much room at the start of the game, he's, he's going to take a chance. And I think Keeper maybe should have done a bit better, but, you know, it's, it's one of those things, isn't it? And fair, fair play to the Baggies, you know, they've got, they could build on this now. They could actually build on this and, and maybe go a bit further. Who knows? But isn't there a danger, though, that they might hire Megson? No, they won't. It'll be Pardew. It'll be Pardew. Yeah. Yeah, Wednesday morning. Um, as I keep saying, as as I said, I'm here. So. <laughs> I want to talk about the Everton manager uh, later on, but we'll get to the football. Uh, so our first match we want to talk about, ninth place Brighton are taking on uh, 20th uh, Palace. And this is our tip of the day for tomorrow. Uh, let me give you some form. Um, overall, uh, previous 10 games, Brighton have four wins, three draws, three losses. Palace, two wins, two draws, six losses. Uh, the odds are Brighton 2.67, 3.09 for the draw, and 2.9. What's our tip of the day, Dan? Our tip of the day is Brighton to win. Um, and it, this has got to be one of the strangest derbies in the Premier League because Brighton and, and Crystal Palace are playing Croydon, South London. Um, they're nowhere near each other, although I'm, I'm told that Crystal Palace is Brighton's actual nearest team if you discount Crawley, which Brighton fans do with, <laughs> uh, without abandon, you know? <laughs> Um, but Brighton are a team that like playing at home. Um, they've, they've done fairly well at home this season. Palace have not won away, have not scored away in the Premier League since April. So, you know... Yeah, they've only, only one loss at home, isn't it, Brighton? Yeah, one yeah. defeat in six Premier League games. Mm. And that's to Manchester City. The world, you know. Which, you know, <laughs> fair enough. And, like, their only defeat recently has been to Manchester United. Mm. Which, again, is like, uh, well, Manchester United at Old Trafford. I can't expect Brighton to win that. Mm. So, yeah, the form's form's pretty good. The team that likes playing at home against the Palace side that is slowly improving, but does not like playing away from. So home. the reason then about the odds, right? Is it just because it's a derby that that the odds are so close? Because 
looking at that on paper, you would expect Brighton to be 1.9. I, I, th- I, I think I think it is down to um, it being a derby, and also because Palace do look like they're improving. You know, they beat Stoke City. Mm. I mean, yeah, they snatched it at the death. But maybe Roy Hodgson's working to magic a little bit. Mm. Now, I know you hate the XG stat, expected goals, but I, you saw me looking up some stuff today, and Crystal Palace's XG is very good. It's about two point something per game they've been averaging because they've, they, they've not been converting enough even though they've had the chances. So, you know, that thing about addressing, uh, or what do you call it, addressing to the mean, or what, what is the phrase? Yeah, something like that. And it, they should, it, it will eventually click and they will start scoring. You know, it's just, uh, <laughs> it's just kind of funny to see it going on for longer and seeing it, you know, etched on poor Roy Hodgson's face. <laughs> just how, I mean, yeah, poor Roy. <laughs> for Palace fans, though, that's got to be, I, I mean, I, I'll admit I hate X2. I hate, um, well, I'm a baseball fan, so I'm used to like saber metrics. And it, like, it comes to a point where you, you're not sport, you're not watching football. You're on, you're taking a maths exam. But, mm-hmm. um, I think if you if you take from this X2 that they're creating chances, that's got to be good for Palace fans because one of the things my team was going through, we weren't scoring goals, but we weren't making chances either. And if you're not making chances, you can't score goals. Whereas if you're making chances and just not hitting them, sooner or later, like you say, something's going to click, someone's going to score one, and things are going to change. Mm-hmm. It's, it's like the match against against West Ham. It was uh, West Ham through the way, and they scored two goals. So they can score. They're just not scoring. They just need it. Yeah. I don't know. Kick up the butt or something. Um, yeah. So that's our our, our tip of the day then. Uh, what's next? Anyone talk about West Brom and Newcastle? Uh, West Brom seventeenth, Newcastle fourteenth. Uh, the odds on this were West uh, West Brom two point four one to draw, three point one and three point two eight for Newcastle to win. In recent form, West Brom have no wins, four draws, six, and uh, Newcastle three wins, two draws, five. Losses. What's your take on this one, well, Dan? Um, you look at that and think straight away Newcastle should win, but mm. Albion are clear favourites. And the reason for that is Newcastle can't win away from home. Um, I think they're without a win in the Premier League this season away from home. But the problem is, is that West Brom can't win either. They've not won in nine games, something mm. like that now, nine, ten games. And they've won in ten. That's what they have. One in ten. Yeah. So the home, so the home, home versus away. So one. Uh, previous 10 matches, one win for West Brom, three draws, six losses, and it's the same for Newcastle. One win, three draws, six losses yeah. away from home. That, that says a lot, doesn't it? Mm. So, I mean, personally, I've, I've, I looked at Newcastle, you know, that they, they got done at the weekend 3 0. But, and, and yeah, West Brom have picked up, but I think this is going to be a tough game for West Brom because neither team's in great form. And I think it's going to be one of those where it might be a draw. Mm. Um, so, I looked at the Asian handicap on this one, and it's a, the odds are a bit skinny, but um, because the line's at 0.25 um, in favour of Newcastle, so I've gone Newcastle plus a half. So that's Newcastle to either draw or win at 1.61. Because I, I do think it'll be a draw, but I want to give myself the added insurance just in case Newcastle do take it from West Brom, because they still won't have um, a managing charge. It'll still be mixing. Yeah, and Rafa kind of looks like he's. I don't think it'll take long for him to be under pressure because the Newcastle fans can turn on him. And I think when they play away from home, they probably feel pressure a bit less, you know. But then again, they're playing West Brom to a half-empty stadium. So. Thanks for listening to the ProTipster Football Show. Check out ProTipster.com where you can earn money by sharing your tips and coupons. Sign up now and get our free daily newsletter where our experts share their tips. Go to protipster.com for more details. Everton are playing uh, West Ham. Everton 16th, West Ham are in 18th. Uh, let me give you some recent form here. So Everton are <laughs> awful. Two wins, two draws, six losses in the previous 10 games. Uh, West Ham, two wins, four draws, four losses. The odds are Everton 2.32, 3.27 for the draw, and 3.24 for Hammers win. Now, this is the... Yeah, this is all about David Moyes, isn't it? Yeah, this is what we need Martin back to tell us <laughs> confidently that West Ham are going to win. Um, and I, I, I could, you know, kind of get on board with that because uh, Everton was just tight bollock at the weekend. Mm. You know, um, I don't know if you've seen social media today, but it, it, it's gone off. Um, Everton fans are not happy. I saw my favourite tweet was that I saw was um, someone showing a like a um, shots on goal. They got Liverpool forty-one. 
uh, Everton Torino and someone said I can't wait for this to be the score when we play them <laughs> and someone an Everton fan replied are you kidding can you see us scoring three goals <laughs> so yeah um, <laughs> nice <laughs> um, Unsworth hasn't a clue does he no no he doesn't no um, I feel sorry for him because he's so it was deadly but I, I think I think there's stuff going on behind the scenes because you know like they're obviously the are after Marco Silva and I'm not sure if he I, I, Apparently he might want it, but what? <laughs> they've just said no. Yeah. Like they've been offered twenty million and they've said no, um, which is um, uh, admirable, I think. Oh, that's probably, but does they'd be afraid about who they could get in, really? And that's why well, they can't take it. Exactly, exactly. And I think I think that's what it's about. You know, and it's also saying to Marco, so we want it that much quit. Yeah. Um, but there's been all kinds of people linked. You know, we look today, they might Sam Allardyce. Mm. Um, oh yeah, I had I had the odd checker page open watching it all day. Uh, Martin Martin O'Neill had been favoured all day until about an hour ago. Times an hour, but four o'clock in the evening, and um, he was as low as like one point eight somewhere. Two point five was roughly <laughs> the average. He was as low as one point eight, and I checked it about ten fifty minutes ago. And Sam Allardyce has gone crashing in at two point two five or in around that. So, um, what I had been hearing j- just from football journalists and that on radio and that they were saying that Sam Sam was reluctant to take it as of yesterday because he wasn't uh, first pick now I think that's a bit petty you know that's kind of like you know like that's like do you remember when you were a teenage boy and then you go up to the girls at a disco and the first girl says no like do you want to dance the first girl says no and then so you, you ask her friend and she obviously says no so like the second girl in this situation is Sam Allardyce and I'm I'm Everton. Except <laughs> <laughs> he's not second; he's about sixty. Um, I I I'll go saying Tony Pulis will take it. Tony Pulis. I said that. I said that on the podcast a couple of weeks ago. I was, I was messing, but <laughs> the thing is, Tony Pulis plays horrible football. Oh, as yeah. Albion fans will attest. But he doesn't get relegated. Mm. And what Everton need is someone to organise that team, and Pulis will do that. Well, Sam is the same though. Yeah, I I, I think Sam. So. I don't think Sam needs it as much. I think, you know, Sam's got to the point, don't he? Yeah. You know, watch, you know, and that's, that's where this, this, oh, I'm not your first choice, I don't really care. Yeah. Comes about because it's like, I don't need the hassle. And don't get me wrong, the Everton job is going to be hassle. I, I don't know if you saw Mike Parry of Talksport putting his foot majorly in his mouth yesterday. No. Um, well, Mike Parry, um, Mike Parry's an Everton fan mm-hmm. and he's been like standing up for Bill Kenwright, the Everton chairman. And, Jim White, you know, Jim White just transfer deadline day. Oh, yeah, it's course, sports, yeah, yeah. yeah. So Jim White said something critical of Everton and Mike Perry laid into him and started talking about his alcoholism. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> like, just out of nowhere, just like, yeah, you know, you're talking crap, you alcoholic. <laughs> <laughs> I, I paraphrase, but yeah. And he's been forced to apologise today. Oh, man. You know, and to be fair, Mike Parry took a lot of stick, a lot of deserved stick over the internet about that. Because, you, you know, you, you, I have no problem with someone disagreeing with their opinion, but you don't say, yeah, 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 what yeah, are you yeah, talking yeah. about, you alky? That's uh, just, that's just like across the line, <laughs> isn't it? It's just beyond the pale. It's bad form. Hey, look, there was something, uh, I, I, I thought was kind of interesting. Uh, from the Everton West Ham uh, thing, and it's that in uh, in seven out of the previous ten um, in overall form for Everton, there's been over two point two point five. Also in home versus away, seven out of ten. Uh, West Ham uh, in their overall form, there's only been four out of ten have been overs, but in their away form, there's been six out of ten overs. So being priced at two point oh seven, you know, it's kind of it's a little bit tempting, even though Everton aren't scoring a lot. You can see a couple of goals here, like you know, you know yourself. Most most goals there are two point was it two point six goals or something on average, and if there was three goals scored, you could see it being a a, a, a one one or, or or a one two to West Ham maybe. Like I don't I don't see Everton winning this, but you could see West Ham winning. Yeah, I I could see it being over three uh, over over two and a half goals. I I personally think it's gonna be a, a one one or a two two draw, mm. and I've backed the draw. At three point two one, mm-hmm. um, purely because I can't see Everton winning, but I can't see West Ham winning either. <laughs> now I would caution people before you do anything about that tip. West Ham have been stitching me up all season, <laughs> so please bear that in mind. 
Yeah, but the, the handicap of having Everton minus 0.25, I, would, I wouldn't touch that with barge ball. You know? And I wouldn't take West Ham plus 0.25 either because it's only 1.88. I'd rather go for, go for goals or, or, or just back the draw. Mm. You know, like what you're doing. So that's Everton, West Ham. Uh, next, uh, you wanted to talk about, um, first place Man City are taking on 10th Southampton. So, you know, City are just, you know, the best team ever. They invented sliced bread and things like that. Um, and they were good, uh, yesterday against, uh, Huddersfield. Uh, they came back. They, they showed they had some metal. They weren't just, they're not just a, you know, poncy tiki taka team. They, they got some, am I allowed to say balls? They got balls. Um, cojones. <laughs> have cojones. Um, and, and you were impressed with them, so you want to take them on the handicap for this, don't yeah, you? Yeah, I, I saw a stat in the second half. They made, uh, Man City made 300 and something complete passes. <laughs> Huddersfield made 41. <laughs> <laughs> and then nice. the thing is, I, I, I've always been, um, wary with, um, with Man City that they, you know, they go behind and they can't come back, but they did in Huddersfield, you know, Raheem Sterling and his best goal scoring form ever. And he's still only November. He's got 12 goals. Mm. And you, I, I can't emphasize how scary that team is. You know, they didn't, um, uh, Gabriel was on the bench, Gabriel Jesus. So mm-hmm. you got like, uh, Sane, Aguero, Sterling. And it's just frightening. <laughs> Absolutely frightening. And he came on, he, he changed the game when he came on. It was he, he set up the, the, the goal. But that's, uh, Guardiola, Guardiola has got his team worked out now. Mm. He's now got the team tuned to the way he likes to play. And he's got it tuned in such a way that if he needs to make a change, he doesn't have to do much, but they know. Yeah. Exactly how he wants to switch it, and you know the, that little tactical tweak can make all the difference. And yeah, um, Man City minus two and a half, so to beat Southampton by three is two point three one. And the reason I'm going to go for it is because I just think Man City are unstoppable at home. And yeah, okay, Southampton um, they did Everton four one at the weekend, but they're not that great a team, and I can't see them stopping Man City in all their glory. And you know, Pep's got. No reason to put the brakes on. No reason to rest play, you know, to, to hold back players. He, he can bring in, uh, players who he wants to that are fresher. He can rotate and still have an amazing teammate there. Mm. Um, you know, it's, it's early to say this, but I think Manchester City have won the title. <laughs> Penny Power going to start paying out on them already. Um, is there any other matches you want to, you want to talk about? Because I, I did actually want to talk a little bit more, a little bit more about Man City. Um, I haven't seen any others that caught my eye. Um, I know Chelsea are playing Swansea, but there's no value in that. Chelsea's, mm. uh, the, the handicap line there is two. And can I see Chelsea beating Swansea by three? Probably, but not as much as I see Man City doing Southampton by three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And at 1.9, it's not worth it. Likewise, Arsenal, um, their, their handicap, uh, for their game. Huddersfield is minus two. Huddersfield is minus two. Yeah. I've attempted to go for Huddersfield on that. Yeah. Um, because, you know, it took a, it took a last minute penalty, didn't it, from Alexis Sanchez to beat Burnley? Yeah. I did say they wouldn't beat Burnley by more than one. <laughs> um, and I mean, then, the one I would be tempted by, and that's, that, that, but it would be like a double chance Watford against Man United. Just because, you know, Marco Silva is, he's, he's pretty good against the big teams. He knows how to stop people. So I could see that being a one-all, uh, maybe Watford not to win, but yeah, I could see it being, it being, been a score draw. I, actually, there is something interesting from this game because um, Lukaku uh, could have been banned. Uh, I don't know if you saw. It wasn't, yeah. even, it wasn't even picked up by the cameras on uh, match of the day in England, mm-hmm. but he kicked out at Guy Tambong and it was it was forwarded to uh, the FA, but they're not doing anything. I saw Man United fans complaining that Lukaku won't be banned. <laughs> it's like, what are you on? What are you on? <laughs> You know, well, see, that's the thing. Well, I, I was talking about this before in the podcast that Lukaku was bought not not to beat the 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 the, 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 the other kind of top six team, but he was he was brought to hammer in goals against the weaker teams. So a game like Watford, that should be right up his alley, you know? Because I think I think next year they'll go for a, for a big sign, and it'll be Griezmann or, or someone like maybe Icardi from Inter or who else would there be? Uh, maybe one one of the lads, maybe Mertens from Napoli or something like that. But I think Lukaku's brain, Lukaku's role isn't to win games. It, I think his role is to hammer teams when they're scoring. Did you see what Mourinho said about Mkhitaryan before the game? No. 
He said that he dropped Mkhitaryan because his form has diminished. Diminished. And like, like, like his, his yeah. form's just not good enough. And it's like, that's harsh. Yeah. And I wonder if Mkhitaryan's days at um, Man United are numbered. Yeah. Because Mourinho was not, was not really that complimentary about him. Isn't it funny how Dortmund midfielders don't really, they don't really get on well anywhere. K- Kagawa, if you can say he failed really at Man mm. United. Uh, Nuri Sahin, as much as I liked him, he, okay, he was badly injured at, at, at Real Madrid, but he came to, to Liverpool, and it was either Brendan Rodgers didn't know what to do with him, or else he just wasn't good enough. And, and then he went back to Dortmund, and he never, hasn't really done anything either. Goza went off to, to Bayern Munich, did alright, but didn't do enough. Goetz was injured for the next six weeks. Is he, yeah? Yeah, he got injured in the shop again. Ugh, well, it's funny though, like, it's weird that they can be so good at one club and then they go off somewhere else and just don't have the same form at all. As you probably know, podcasts grow by word of mouth. Show your support for the Protipster Football Show by telling your football match friends all about our podcast or by leaving a review for us on iTunes. Look, uh, I want to turn then to the, uh, to the Everton thing because, uh, yeah, Big Sam, uh, I had been watching it all day, the odds, and I was thinking, okay, Martin O'Neill, Martin O'Neill, because, you know, as a Republic of Ireland fan, I kind of want, I, I'd, been, I'd been half hoping that he would take the job uh, because I think he's done as much as he can with the Republic of Ireland team. I would have, Roy Keane, or McCarthy, even Brian Kerr coming back, or Stephen Kenny from, from that Dundalk team that's done so well. But it looks now like it's going to be Big Sam. Uh, Does Martin O'Neill need the hassle of it? Seriously. I, I think, I, well, I think he's had a bad reaction to, uh, to the fans, the Irish fans' reaction. The Irish fans were really, really miffed, um, about the manner of the defeat and about how they haven't, it's kind of like careful what you wish for because Irish fans know that Ireland can't play expansive, sexy football. Just can't. You know the players, but at the same time, uh, you don't want to be playing this negative ten men behind the ball at home. You know. Um, so I don't know. I think he's kind of run out of ideas, or else he's just kind of. It's, it's like what I was saying before about Moyes at West Ham, he's, he's not the new generation of manager, he's not the old generation of manager, so he's kind of in between, whereas Martin O'Neill is the old style now, like he, he he's like, Moyes well, the club was, he's, he, he names the team an hour before kickoff. Like, they don't do drills, they don't, they're not, they don't do a lot of practice on, 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 on certain things, and it's, they're kind of headless chickens, and, and they, they, well, that's okay when you're Nigel Clough and you have great players, but when you're Martin O'Neill, you don't have great players, so, I don't know. One other thing, do Man City have a weakness? And I've written down here, is it Kyle Walker? It's funny you say that, because I know people have been saying Kyle Walker's weakness. Um, it's possible. He's, Kyle Walker's very much an attacking fullback. Defensively, I don't think he's as great. So if you were going up against Man City, would you, would you just put everything on that side of the field in the hope that you're catching them off guard? I think you've got, I think, yeah, it's probable. I mean, what, what's surprising is Fabian Delph at left back. Mm. Who knew? Who knew? Because yeah. um, like you got Danilo, who's quite, you know, who knew he was going to be a uh, backup and uh, uh, to Mendy, and then Mendy's gone out, uh, like got injured, and like he knows backup to Fabian Delph. It's like he's also backup to Carl Walker. So I don't know. Uh, yeah, it's a possible. It's a possible. Um, uh, it's a possible weakness. I think the big weakness that Man City had was in central defence, and Touchwood got rid of, got rid of it. No, uh, Mangala's making noises and wants to leave, and I think Man City will be right to say. Adios. Adios, because it didn't work. Right then, uh, we'll leave it there, so we'll be back on Thursday night again with more uh, Premier League previews and European football. Make sure and check out ProTips.com where you can earn real money by sharing your winning football tips. And subscribe to us on YouTube as well. You can get daily tips videos, previews, betting strategy videos, and podcasts as well. I'm Pro Tipster Paddy. Thanks for listening and enjoy the football. Good luck. Thanks for listening, guys. Don't forget to check out ProTipster.com where you can earn money by sharing winning football tips. Check us out on YouTube, Twitter, and Instagram as well. All the links for those are on ProTipster.com. Bye.